Information. In one year alone, subscribers to the social networking and microblogging site grew more than a staggering 1,300%. What do you think about all the attention here on Twitter? What's this attention? <laughs> that got the attention of Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg. The sense I get is that Mark Zuckerberg probably has a vision for where he wants to take Facebook, and he probably looked down the road and saw Twitter on that road to achieving his vision. Zuckerberg tried to acquire Twitter. Business Week reported he had offered $500 million worth of cash and Facebook stock, which CEO Evan Williams turned down. By 2008, users were posting 300,000 tweets per day. Users that included Oprah Winfrey. When Oprah tweeted, Oprah introduced Twitter to tens of millions of people who had never even heard of Twitter before. So it was great free advertising for Twitter. And it didn't stop there. Being on Oprah wasn't as important as the State Department asking Twitter to not go on its daily maintenance because the Iranian elections were being broadcast on Twitter. Following allegations of fraud in the 2009 Iranian election, protesters took to the streets. Authorities in the country censored cell phone messages, newspapers, and websites that covered the increasingly violent protests. Eclipsing traditional and mainstream news, Twitter became the outside world's primary source for information on Iran. We don't like censorship. We don't like being blocked. We think that the open exchange of information can have a positive global impact. We've always been pro-information sharing, democratization of information, and, you know, more information is better. Twitter really got global attention from how its communications platform was able to spread news about what otherwise probably, you know, most people on the planet wouldn't have heard about. By the end of 2009, the number of tweets went up to two and a half million per day. But Stephen Colbert was not impressed. My guest tonight is the co-founder of Twitter. Why 140 characters? Was, was texting too complex? I mean, what? <laughs> the limit on texts are 160 characters. Uh -huh. We wanted to reserve a little bit of room for our username, mm -hmm. and so we made it 140 and standardized there. And you'd be surprised at the creativity. <laughs> Everybody was talking about Twitter. But one big question still dogged the founders. How are you going to make money? You know, it's like, I don't think Ev Williams and Bistone could walk down the street without somebody just sort of whispering, how are you going to make money? Can you give us an outlook for the rest of the year? At Twitter's first developer conference in April of 2010, the Twitter founders finally introduced a plan for how the company might make money. We expect the ad program to be the promoted tweets that we're launching, or we just launched this week, to certainly be the largest part um, in, in a few months, but it's going to take a while to ramp up. Promoted tweets uh, allow people to, in a transparent way, put marketing messages in front of people who, who follow Twitter streams. And it'll be interesting to see how it works. I think that the company knows that it's a work in progress. On October 4th, 2010, came the news that Evan Williams was stepping down as CEO of the company. Twitter has grown to be huge, and yet it has yet to really prove itself as a business. And I think that Evan Williams has not really proven himself as the right CEO to lead Twitter. Replacing him as CEO would be former chief operating officer Dick Costello. We're growing at uh, just a ridiculous rate. You know, having been, having run a, a few other companies and, and having spent a couple of years at Google, the pace of growth that we see is just, you know, I've never seen anything like it. Dick Costolo, long time known quantity in Silicon Valley, uh, the operations guy. Even though he's chief executive officer, he's really still the operations guy. Evans, uh, he's an idea guy, but he's not a CEO kind of a guy. William said he asked Costolo to take the job so he could be completely focused on product strategy. But the musical chairs in Twitter's top management continued in March of 2011. Williams' departure opened the door for original inventor Jack Dorsey to return to a major role, taking over as executive chairman. Dorsey tweeted he was thrilled to get back to work at Twitter. It's pretty obvious that innovation slowed down over the last couple of years. And you know, while Twitter did grow dramatically, it grew without changing itself very much. There was a problem with Twitter from the beginning, 
that while it was a really cool technology, nobody really knew what it meant as a business. That is a problem that to some degree has dogged the company to this day. But that hasn't stopped the world's obsession with Twitter. It's a dream come true for narcissists, but it's also a dream come true for journalists, celebrities, media people, brands, anybody literally that wants to reach a large public with a series of messages. That includes Lady Gaga, who is the most followed person on Twitter, and Justin Bieber runs a close second. The State Department has recognized its reach and is now using it as a modern day voice of America. Twitter is having an impact on world history. There just aren't very many companies that do that. There's no question that Twitter is becoming part of the fabric of our society, a way that people communicate, a way that news is disseminated. It's the twittering of birds, that communication that we don't really know the meaning of. And yet, it is profoundly important.